Excellent, we're recording. Right, so, just as a reminder of what I just said. So we have the memory here, RAM, okay? In the memory, there are one, two, three, four, five things. We don't know what they are yet. We kind of do because we can see them, okay? But we're going to leave that for the processor to work out. And they are in memory locations, one, or memory addresses, one, two, three, five, and six. So this here is the memory. We can consider everything else, the processor, and in that processor we can consider the combination of the AC, the accumulator, and these registers, program counter, memory address register, memory data register, and current instruction register as the cache. Okay, so the registers are these little data hold data places in, in within the processor that hold very small amounts of data for very short periods of time. They don't store. We're going to try and use avoid the word store because that suggests non-volatile in the hard drive. So in the register, they hold the data for a whole small piece of data for a small period of time. So here's what's going to happen. The program counter, because it's a very abstract process, is set to 1. That's our starting point. We're going to start at 1. So what happens first is it transfers 1 to the MAR, to the memory address register. It's ticked over that main process of one, so it's going to increase pro program counter to two, because the next one it's dealing with is two. But, for now, memory address is set to one, and it's going to basically go to memory address one and deal with whatever's there first. So, uh, so the address bus and the control bus go to memory address one. Okay? The address bus is one way. It can only go from processor to memory. Doesn't need to bring anything back because all it contains is the address in the memory that is being accessed. It needs the control bus because the control bus is the synchronizing signal. Okay? The control bus is essentially a signal that's, that's generated by the control unit every three billionth of a second and whatever other signals need to move around the, the CPU, go with it. It's a synchronizing signal. It's the only data it's carrying. So, they have gone to memory address 1, and the control bus is now going to accompany the data bus back. The data bus contains the data. Okay? So, the data bus comes back and puts the data into the memory data register. That is fetch. It has fetched some data from the memory. Can we see that? It doesn't know what it is yet. So it's put it into the memory data register. The memory data register is like it's the first place anything goes in the processor. It's almost like triage at a hospital. You know when you go to the doctors or emergency and they're not, they don't know what's wrong with you? So somebody just does triage. Okay, what is wrong with you so I can send you to the right place? It's the same with this. The memory data register is just saying, look, I'm going to look after you until I know what you are. So, load five. Does that sound like data or an instruction? It's an instruction. So, it needs to go into the current instruction register. Now the system knows it is an instruction, it is going to hand it over to the control unit so the control unit can deal with it. We now have the instruction load 5 in the control unit. The control unit now knows it's into a subprocess, so it's going to tick over the program counter and then it's going to deal with loading 5. So that it's going to send uh, a, just a control signal to tick that over to 2. So next time round we're going to look at 2. But for now, you want me to load 5. You want me to load whatever is in memory address 5. Therefore... The memory address register needs to have what in it? If the next memory address is 5, what does the memory address register need to have in it? It needs to have 5 in it, okay? So the control unit says, look, we're dealing with memory address 5 next. So the memory address register holds the address of the next location to be accessed in memory. Okay? 
So it knows it's got to go to memory address 5. It's got to load whatever's in 5. So the address bus with 5 in it is accompanied by the control bus, and they're now looking at memory address 5. In it is, again, we don't know whether it's data or instructions yet in the, in the purest sense of the term, but it's now going to fetch 5. By the way, that's just, can you see, so coming back a step, it fetched load 5, it decoded it to know it was an instruction, and it is now executing it. Can we see that? Fetching it from memory, decoding it as either data or instruction, and then executing, what, executing depending on what it is. So, it's now going to load uh, whatever was in 5. So the data bus now loads that value into the memory data register. It's now going to work out whether that's a, 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 it's going to decode whether it is data or an instruction. Does that look like an instruction to you? No. So it is not going to go into the current instruction register. Right now, the control unit doesn't know what to do with it, so it's just going to accumulate it somewhere. Where would you accumulate it? In the accumulator. So for now, because it has no idea what to do with it, the execute on this is that it's just going to dump it, for now, into the accumulator. There you go. Data bus says, look, do you know what? For now, let's just put it in the accumulator. The accumulator, you can imagine, is a big, long um, stack of uh, registers. It's just hundreds and hundreds of registers. It's just dumped it into, an, into a generic register. So, now it knows that, it's going to tick over to the next set of instructions. So, 2 becomes the next memory address. The memory address register, the address bus, sorry, goes with the control unit, and they're now looking at two. They're going to retrieve the data or instruction from two, and they're going to put it into the nobody memory data register. It, it's fetched it. It's now going to decode it. Data or instruction? instruction? It's an instruction. Add six. It's going to put that, therefore, into the current instruction register, and it's going to hand it over to the control unit so it can do, deal with it. Add six. So what's the next thing the control unit has to change? The what? The yes. What's it got to change the MAR value to? Six. Because that's the next memory address it is looking at. So it says, right, memory address register, six, please. So it ticks that over because we're going to come back to that next time. Right, memory address register, we're going to look at six. So now it carries out the fetch on that instruction. Address bus, one way, with the control bus, goes and has a look at six, fetches it, brings it into the memory data register. Is that a data or an instruction? Okay. It is data, but it does kind of know what to do with it. So for now, it's going to say, okay, it's data. So I'm now going to put you into the accumulator as well. But I know I need to add you. I've been told to add whatever was in six to whatever I've already got. So it told me to load whatever was in 5, which was the number 12, and add to it whatever was in 6, which is the number 8. So it's got to add 12 and 8 together. Where do you think it's going to do that arithmetic? The ar arithmetic logic unit, okay? It is going to, with the control buses, okay, it's now going to add them together, and it's going to put them back into the accumulator, because it's added them together. Fair enough so far? Right. Now what it's going to do is going to go and have a look at the next instruction. STO7. So what does it need to do? Oh, it'll tick over the program counter. What does it now need to do with the MAR? Okay. So it's going to go and fetch whatever's in three first, sorry. Bring it back in the memory data register. Does that look like data or an instruction? It's instruction. So it's going to put it in the current instruction register, and it's going to pass it to the control unit. The control unit now knows that the memory address needs to be... It ticks over the program counter. The, mem the control unit now knows that the memory address needs to be 7. Okay? So, we've got the instruction STO7. What do you think STO might mean? Store. That is what's called a mnemonic. It's just a shortened version of something. Okay? STO means store. Sometimes you see load as LD, for example. 
So it, know, it, needs, it knows it needs to store something in memory location or memory address 7. And it kind of it knows what it is as well. So it goes, okay, so you've asked me to add something together. I'm going to go and get what I've added together. And I'm going to put it into the memory data register. And I'm going to carry out the instruction of storing that in memory location, memory address 7. So it puts 20 into memory address 7. There we go. So can you see actually a reasonably simple process of adding two numbers together needed three instructions, load, add, and store, and then underneath each main instruction there was another couple of things that had to happen. So that is the fetch, decode, execute cycle. It fetches things from memory. It decodes what they are. It can only be data or an instruction, and then it executes whatever needs to happen with them. Yes? Why didn't it use a uh, form? Uh, oh, there's a memory address, yeah. just to delineate between the two. It could have done. It could easily have done. Um, in some of these simulators, they will say, okay, as soon as you encounter a blank memory address, stop. It, it is a, um, it's a halt prompt. Uh, for example, in Little Man Computer, which we might look at later on, as soon as it encounters a blank memory address, stops. It means stop. Okay, so what the I think if I, there's not another step, but the next step would be okay. Program count to four. Have a look at four. There's nothing there. We've stopped. Any other questions about that? I, I haven't got where they got twenty from. Because it took twelve, put it in the accumulator. Oh. Took eight, put it in the accumulator. So it loaded whatever was in location five, which was twelve. Then it added whatever was in. Uh, location 6, which was the number 8, to 12 in the arithmetic logic unit. So 12 plus 8 is 20, and then it output, and it put it into memory address 7. Any other questions? Yes? I don't get why does it say uh, 4 near program counter. Why does it say 4? Oh, because every time it has dealt with this main instruction, it ticks over, so it knows where to look next in the, in the, in the uh, memory. Okay, yeah. so basically, it will, if it was running again, it would look at four, because four is blank, it would stop. Oh, so if three was blank, it would say three. It would have stopped, yeah. Oh, okay. Any other questions?